Hey friends, before we start today's episode, I have an important message to share with you. As you must be aware, due to certain new policies, you are not able to comment on our videos. But don't you worry my friends, you can still share your valuable feedback, comments, views and love at our email ID peekabookidsfeedback at gmail.com. Similarly, you can also visit our Instagram and Facebook page and continue to engage with us. We are looking forward to hearing from you. <laughs> yes, kinda. Excellent question, little kitty. Hey friends, I'm sure many of us must have lost a few brain cells while figuring out the mechanism behind the drinking bird toy's working process. So, without further ado, let us see how does it actually work. Zoom in! The drinking bird, also popularly known as dunking bird, dipping bird, etc., was invented by Miles V. Sullivan, is not merely a toy, but also one of the greatest inventions ever made. But before we debunk its mystery, let us know what is it made of. Inside the drinking bird, you will see two hollow glass bulbs attached at the opposite ends of a long glass tube. This glass tube is extended in the bottom hollow bulb and not on the upper bulb. The lower bulb is filled with a red dyed liquid, which in fact is methylene chloride. This liquid is also highly volatile, meaning it evaporates rapidly due to weak intermolecular bonds in the liquid state. After the methylene chloride is added, most of the remaining air is vacuumed out. Then, this tube is covered with a cloth from exteriors to make it appear like an actual bird. And on top of the head is a plastic top hat, which is only for decoration. Taped to the bottom bulb are tail feathers, which help it to maintain balance. And one last thing that completes it and plays a crucial role in action is its legs, which are attached with a pivot connection. So, once the bird's beak is dipped inside the water, it comes back to the rest position. During this process, we could see that the liquid at the bottom starts rising towards the head portion on its own that tilts the head portion of the bird ahead or downward. And this up-down cycle continues for a while before it finally comes back to the resting position once again and stops moving. But the crucial question is, what caused this seesaw movement in the first place? Well, here comes the science behind it. You see, when the bird tips forward, the fabric wrapped around its beak and head absorbs water, which eventually evaporates and cools the head. The temperature decrease in the head condenses the methylene chloride vapor, decreasing the vapor pressure in the head relative to the vapor pressure in the bird's stomach portion. The greater vapor pressure in the lower part forces fluid up through the neck and into the head, which makes the upper portion of the bird heavy and pushes the head of the bird downwards. This happens due to a sudden change in the mass or weight causing the bird to rotate. To understand how a pressure differential causes fluid within the bird to rise, Consider what happens when you use an ordinary drinking straw. When you suck fluid into the straw, you create a region of reduced pressure within the straw. Because 
outside air pressure is greater, it pushes downward on the surface of the fluid, forcing it upward. Now, once the liquid accumulates in the head of the bird, the bottom of the tube is no longer submerged in liquid, which creates a gap, displacing the liquid as it goes. Once that happens, the liquid starts flowing back to the base, equalizing the pressure in the top and bottom hollow glass bulbs. The bottom flow of the liquid makes the bird bottom heavy, bringing it back to the standing position as the cycle continues again and again to amaze the world. But not you anymore, as you know the science behind it. Trivia time! Did you know that the fluid inside the toy is not non-toxic? Also, contact with dichloromethane can cause skin irritation. Yes, so it's always advisable to avoid breaking it to be on the safer side. Hope you learned something new in today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, never mind.